Interview with Mrs. Diane Aloyi, representative of the Baha'i community at the United Nations in Geneva, on the current human rights situation for the Baha'i in Iran and how Iranians can help each other to end the human rights violations in Iran. Thank you, Ms. Alawi, for taking your time. You're a representative of the Baha'i here in Geneva at the UN. We'd like to focus on human rights in Iran. Now, let me first uh, put the question, is there any recent events in Iran which uh, concern Baha'i and concern violations of human rights? Um, I think there are maybe, there are a lot of events going on. You know, uh, the persecution of the Baha'i is continuous. So it's nothing that uh, is uh, sporadic. Uh, students are continuously denied uh, access to higher education. Individuals, shops, and uh, working uh, employment possibilities are continually closed and denied of them. So people are continually arrested. Of course, some are released, but you know, so the number of prisoners is still, you know, over a hundred uh, Baha'is in prison. But maybe there are two events um, in the most recent months that uh, perhaps I could highlight. Uh, one is uh, the attack on a family in the city of Birjan, the family of Mr. and Mrs. Moody and their daughter, uh, that were attacked at night and they were stabbed. And the person who was masked and came into their house and tried to stab them really had the intent of killing them. It was by pure uh, chance that they were uh, that they were taken to hospital in time and that they could actually be um, saved but uh, that you you could tell me so you know I'm sure a lot of these attacks happened uh, to a lot of people unfortunately in Iran the problem is that we have all reasons to believe that this was uh, already done by uh, government forces or at least condoned because they the Nobody has gone after finding who that individual are, let alone prosecuting him. So this shows that it, there is some kind of at least support, if not direct involvement of the Iranian authorities in these kinds of acts. And unfortunately, it's not the first one. Um, there are, have been a number of these, uh, these uh, events. The second was uh, just, uh, just about uh, a little bit over a month ago uh, when um, agents of the Revolutionary Guards uh, started uh, bulldozing the Baha'i Cemetery in Shiraz. Uh, that cemetery, of course, had been confiscated some years back, but uh, people were still interred there and people would, Baha'is would go there. They would no longer bury anybody, but they would at least go and pay their respect and, uh, and say prayers for their, for their loved ones who had been killed. And uh, they started to bulldoze this and even to dig up the, the bodies and the graves of these of this cemetery. Um, and you know, in this cemetery, a lot of people were buried, but I think some of them had been already killed at the hands of the Islamic Republic. For example, the 10 young women who were hanged in Shiraz, only because they had uh, given uh, Baha'i classes to Baha'i children, and one of them was only 17, um, they were buried there. So you imagine that this is really not only for the parents of these people or the relatives of these people, not only have they lost one family member, one loved one at the hands of the Islamic Republic only because they were Baha'is, now even their remains are being dug out only again because they're Baha'is. So I think these are the two most salient, I would say, and dramatic events that have taken place in the past months. And is there, by the new government of Mr. Rouhani, is there any objection to all these human rights violations which are perceivable to your organization? No, we have not seen or heard anything uh, from Mr. Rouhani or his government in defense of the Baha'is. Um, there has been a number of statements in defense of uh, right to citizenship to all Iranians. This is something that Mr. Rouhani has, uh, has stated many times. And there has also been, uh, you know, that he has a special advisor, Mr. Younesi, for minorities. And in fact, the irony was that at the exact same time that they were, uh, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards were digging the, the cemetery in Shiraz, Mr. Younesi was also in Shiraz, and he was, um, and he was attending um, in a synagogue 
uh, an event to show you know collaboration between different religions so this is the reality of iran unfortunately let me put it this way there are not only Baha'i who, whose rights are violated, there are a lot of other groups being ethnic minorities, religious minorities, there's a di huge diversity of groups that are being persecuted, students who are dissidents, women who are being forced under some kind of dress codes which they name Islamic dress code, and so on and so on, the list might be very very long. Now. For years, all these groups come to Geneva and uh, put forward their cases. But still, one might have the impression unified forces of all these groups could help change some substantial change, bring about some substantial change in Iran. Why do you think this does not really happen? You know, I think one of the reasons is uh, something that the Iranian government uh, does very well, which is uh, spread lies about various groups and use all their medias in order to do that. And you know yourself, because I, I've come to know that in fact, you know, the Gonabadi Dervishes, they're exactly subject to exactly the same form of, uh, of defamation and lies that are being spread through them through particularly the Iranian television and websites. Uh, about, you know, make, saying all sorts of really strange things about them, which are absolutely not true. And it's exactly the same case for the Baha'is. And I'm sure, I think it's also probably for other groups. And, you know, there is also all these uh, discussions about uh, ethnic uh, minorities and what they are and, uh, you know, trying to also create some, some doubts in, in the minds of the people. So I think that this, um, this, camp, this smear campaign that the government is doing for various groups, has of course had an effect on the Iranians and has, uh, and has created some kind of suspicion between one another sometimes or if no, not suspicion, lack of uh, collaboration. However, I must say that things have completely changed in, the past, in some years now and more and more we see that people are actually realizing uh, that all these are uh, fabricated uh, stories. And, uh, and I think that the government itself, by the way it's treating, I mean, more and more openly, by the way it's persecuting everybody, even the majority, you know, um, is, uh, is also showing its hand. And, uh, and I tell you, I think one of the most positive events for me that took place very recently was, just a few weeks ago, was the sixth anniversary of the imprisonment of the Yaron, the seven uh, group that uh, guided the Baha'i community in Iran. And you know, these, these people have been uh, condemned to 20 years imprisonment, and it's the sixth year that they are now in prison. And um, a group of uh, prominent Iranians, not Baha'is, uh, uh, an ayatollah, a number of lawyers, uh, civil society representatives, uh, journalists, and others, people who are human rights defenders in one way or another, prominent, uh, went and visited the family of these, of these seven, I mean, of one of the family and, and saw the others in that home, uh, in order to, you know, really uh, uh, show their support uh, for the plight of the Baha'i. And I think this is remarkable. It's a very courageous act on their behalf, but it's also a remarkable sign of really um, um, this sense that we are all together in this fight, this just fight, a very simple fight, simply for human rights. It has no other intent than just granting rights to all Iranians in the same way without any prejudice or discrimination based on fabricated ideas that are completely false. Great, thank you. And you just mentioned one idea that uh, might help to to bring about a betterment, uh, an improvement of the human rights situation in Iran, you mentioned the fact of solidarity. Solidarity by people who might not even be concerned as a group or as an individual with those who are in some way or other um, um, Discriminated, discriminated or persecuted. persecuted, 
Yes, exactly. So what what other ideas might there be or what other steps can you propose to anybody in order to bring about a change, an improvement? I think this is it. The change comes with individuals. And we and again I can tell you that we have seen this. We have seen neighbors coming at the defense of Baha'is whose homes were you know burned or other or employers who had Baha'i employees refusing to dismiss them when they were forced to you know uh, by the uh, secret services ministry of information and saying no you know they were very good employees so I don't see any reason why I should dismiss so standing up you know very courageous acts but individual small acts or students who refused to take the exams at university when they found out that their one of their fellow students was not allowed to take the exam because he was a Baha'i, they said, okay, then we don't also take that exam. So, you know, acts of solidarity, I think um, these are the most, this will be the, this will make the change uh, in, in Iran because people will start to, you know, feel that this is, this is unfair, this is unjust, this is not Islamic justice that the government uh, portrays itself as a, uh, as trying to promote in the country, and therefore we're going to stand up against it. Great. So you mentioned solidarity, which in fact is as well civil disobedience, acts, little acts of civil disobedience. And besides these actions inside of Iran, do you think there's any necess necessity of international community to react towards the regime or give signals towards the people in Iran? The international community is already giving signals. You know, there is the resolution here at the Human Rights Council that appoints the, uh, the special rapporteur, Mr. Shaheed. There is the resolution at the General Assembly. There are a number of statements that are done either by the European Union or by individual governments that talk about human rights violations in Iran, either generally or on particular aspect. And um, so I think that uh, the international community is giving those signals, but those signals have to continue being given. Uh, we should not stop. And I think that uh, it is important also that the Iranian government knows that it is watched for its acts, for its action, and that, you know, it will not, it's, it's on the record and people know what they're doing. And um, uh, regardless of the fact that sometimes uh, representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran may give the impression that they don't care about these signals, they do care and that's why this pressure must continue. Thank you very much Diane for your time, thank you very much Mrs. Aloy for taking your time to have these very clear and very exact uh, words on Iran and the situation of the Baha'i. Thank you very much thank and uh, good luck in the continuation of your work. Thank you.